This is the first in a series of videos showing you how to put together a design exclusively using Photoshop, just like we will for Project 2A. So here's the finished design that we're going to eventually end up with. And the first step in this process is to pick our background photo. Now this is probably the single most important decision that you'll have to make in this design. Your background photo goes a long way to making the design successful or not. What we're looking for in a good background photo is a photograph that has an interesting focal point, but also a lot of dead space. And I define dead space such as the sky up here, the water and beach down here, and the focal point, I would say, are these rocks in the water. This is something called the Twelve Apostles, which is a landmark off the coast of southern Australia that a lot of visitors and travelers go to. So the first thing we're going to do with this picture is we're going to crop it. But unlike cropping for the homework assignment that we did, where we left one of these two boxes blank and set the other one at 10 inches and one at 200 pixels per inch, we're going to fill in all three of these boxes this time. And the reason is very simple. We want the background photo to be the exact size of our design because it is the background for our design. And our design is going to be exactly 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall with 200 pixels in each inch. So we need to fill in all three of these boxes, 8 inches, 10 inches, 200 pixels per inch. Now as you can see by the box that appears on the screen, this photograph is not the same shape as 8 by 10. It's a little bit taller, and you can see that the original, the initial crop box has a little bit of space above the picture and a little bit of space below the picture that we're going to have to eliminate in order to make this fit the shape of 8 by 10. Now there's a couple different ways we could eliminate. We could take a little off of the top and the bottom, or we could take the picture and move it like so. Sorry for the confusion there. I had to do a couple things there to get the moving tool in place. And we could take all off the bottom, or we could move the picture like so and take all off the sky. Now I'm going to take all off of the bottom. And the reason why is I've already done a sketch of what I hope this design will look like. And I know that for me, I'm going to value the space at the top more than I'm valuing the space at the bottom. Now to make that crop happen, just like with the cropping tool from before, we're going to double click on that picture. And now the picture is eight by 10 at 200 pixels per inch. If I'd like to confirm that, I can go to the image pull down menu and pull down to something called image size. Here at image size, notice the width is set at eight inches, the height is set at 10 inches, and the resolution is set at 200 pixels per inch. Now let's look at a couple of other examples of background photos to discuss what is good and what is not so good about a background picture. Here's a picture that as you can see we could crop into 8 by 10 as well and this is a beautiful picture. This is actually a picture of the fireworks celebration on January 1st over the harbor in Sydney with the Opera House, the famous Sydney Opera House and the Sydney Bridge in the background. Now while this is a great photograph it would be a terrible background photo. And the reason why is it is simply too busy. It's too complicated. We need empty space and dead space because what we're going to do in this design is put a lot of other things on top of the background picture. And with this picture right here, there's just too many other things going on to make it a good background image. Now let's take a look at this picture right here because this is another interesting case. The reason why I would like to discuss this picture is because, as you can see, the picture itself is horizontal, but our design is vertical, meaning that it doesn't fit the same shape. That doesn't mean, however, that we can't use it. Just because our design is vertical doesn't mean that all of our pictures for the background have to be vertical as well. We can use this picture as long as we don't try to crop it so small that when we blow it up we end up losing our resolution. So I'm going to go back 
and keep the entire height of the photo. And before I crop it, however, I'm going to decide, do I want this part of the rock? Do I want this part of the rock? Or do I want something more in the center? Uh, for my purposes, I think I want to have one of the ends, either the right end or the left end. I think I'm going to go with the right end, just like so. And I will double click now. And there's my picture. And if I go to image and pull down the image size, 8 by 10 by 200. So it's the correct size for this design. Now one last thing I want to talk to you about with the background photo is the resolution because it's really important. So here I've got another picture of the same scene from earlier and I'm going to take out my crop tool and again I'm going to crop it and I'm going to move the picture within the box just like I did the last time. And then once I have it set up, I'm going to double click on it to execute that crop. Now, if we take a look at this picture and we compare it to the previous picture, I would hope all of you could see there is a huge difference in quality between the sharpness or crispness of the rocks in the water here and the sharpness and the crispness of the rocks in the water here. And that's because this was actually a thumbnail photograph, not the full high resolution photograph. And when I ended up cropping it into 8x10x200, by by it went pixely on me. It got all grainy and blurry. And what we don't want to have is our background photo be of a low quality. Because if we place high quality photos on a low quality background, our design is just going to look a little weird. So that's how we can go about selecting our background picture, which is this one right here, and get on the way toward making our design, which looks like this right here. So that will conclude our first video. In our second video, I'll show you how to place the other visual elements on top of this design. Thanks for listening.